All right, so this is uh, history of Exchange Server uh, part three, and uh, we just looked at Exchange Server 2000 transport rules, where I said that we can configure different rules, where we can allow or deny uh, different emails or different email flows, uh, and we can put different rules in there. We are gonna check it out when we will just configure Exchange Server 2016 transport uh, rules. So. Uh, one of the uh, other uh, Exchange Server uh, versions that we have is Exchange Server 2010. Exchange Server 2010 uh, just came in uh, to the market uh, on year 2010 and uh, it was like an improvement again uh, for, from Exchange Server 2007. So let's see uh, what what we have in Exchange Server 2010. One of the important things that we have is Role-Based Access Control, RBAC, or Role-Based Access Control. So uh, the permission model that we have in Exchange Server 2010, it uses RBAC. So when you are trying to give permission to a user, uh, when you are trying to give permission to an ad exchange administrator or help desk or desktop support or any IT person, um, you can use a uh, role based access control where uh, you can be very specific. Uh, very specific means to say is like if uh, the help desk uh, needs to uh, get uh, like permission to work on recipients only, to work on like mailboxes only, uh, to work on their like the, their. The help desk support should be able to see the properties of uh, like uh, um, recipients and the help desk support should not be able to delete anything. So you can make that very specific with rule based access control or for example the help desk staff uh, needs to manage uh, mailbox quotas. As quotas is one of the features inside um, like each mailbox you got quotas where you can you can configure like how much uh, like how much the mailbox size should be for a user account. So you can do all those things. So you can, you see now that you are so specific with with mail, with mail uh, assigning permissions, uh, but uh, with Exchange Server 2000 and 2003, permissions were uh, just assigned through Delegation Wizard. And uh, what the problem was with uh, Delegation Wizard that you were configuring uh, through Exchange System Manager console was uh, that uh, once you uh, just grant permission to uh, the administrator to uh, do a job, you had to like add them, uh, for example, to view only administrator uh, uh, role or exchange administrator role or exchange full administrator role. So uh, there was like three roles on that those versions, which was like exchange view only administrator, exchange administrator, exchange full administrator. So what is happening in here is like if you had like three to five or six or seven or ten exchange servers on your organization once you make uh, someone a uh, member of uh, like uh, exchange administrator or exchange full administrator what you were doing was like you were giving that administrator full access to all those servers like all those ten servers so uh, that 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 was really a problem because for you, you for if a, if a guy is working if an IT IT person is working in your main site like in your Sacramento site or if your New York site why should you give him access to like uh, Exchange Server that is in Arizona that is in India uh, you're 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 never gonna do that. So that was really a problem. But with rule based access control, based on a rule of the IT administrator, you're giving him access. So you're very specific. You can be very specific, and you whatever uh, you want, whatever you desire uh, on on a permission, you can just give it uh, give it to him. So. Uh, one of the uh, other things that we have is, uh, um, I would say uh, that is database availability group DAG. 
so uh, if you remember uh, with earlier version we had to configure like clustering uh, we had to go and configure clustering and with this clustering feature what we were doing was like we were just uh, going to uh, either we were going to like Windows uh, operating system clustering and we had to like set up two servers we had to install clustering feature here we had to install clustering feature here through server manager of uh, that operating system and then add exchange servers into cluster exchange server into cluster so it was like uh, a ton of work and then uh, little complex to actually so what happened with DAG database availability group uh, it's a great feature where you can configure like two databases like this is your exchange one this is your exchange two once or you can configure more than that so <clears throat> what you're doing in here is like you got database for finance and then what you want to do is you want to make a copy of that database in here and in, in here so what it's gonna do is it's gonna just once you configure database availability group it's gonna like copy everything here and uh, everything in here like it's gonna send the heartbeat to each other all the time like if you're alive you're alive you're alive but when the server goes down or this database is corrupted it will say no I am not alive so it will just uh, hear that and then this will become active so this was an a story that I was telling you and it was an example so don't take it serious <laughs> so uh, so uh, that's how uh, the theory is uh, actually and uh, that's how the DAG works and I'm gonna expand more about DAG and DAG is like a really a great feature inside Exchange Server 2010 that you can configure uh, to uh, make sure that you you got load balancing when one one of your um, one of your um, databases is corrupted or it it goes down it can just uh, move to the other server uh, integrated archiving and retention that's uh, another uh, another thing that we have with uh, our exchange server and so to keep your uh, messages safe, uh, like uh, the Exchange Server 2010 is always like archiving uh, your your messages. So uh, whatever messages you have, it's just going to archive, and then um, all your messages are just saved in there uh, in case like if you have uh, some of your emails deleted you can just retrieve you can just go to your archive and then uh, see in there um, if uh, those emails are in there uh, one of the other features that you have is like uh, uh, retention retention is also integrated now with exchange Server 2010 where you can configure different retention policies like for how long do you want to keep um, the emails in 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 your outlook like for a user so uh, this is because um, if if a user is using his emails for like for 15 years and then uh, you do not have any retention policy what's gonna happen is that it's gonna his database or his mailbox is gonna get larger and larger and larger and uh, there are like more chances for for his mailbox to get corrupted because uh, most of the time um, the exchange server may not be able to handle or uh, retention uh, is actually a great policy that we can apply so uh, we never want to uh, have our users to ha have like more uh, emails and like have have like 500 or 600 or one terabyte of emails um, that most of them they really don't need so this is an integrated feature where you can configure like how long uh, we should keep uh, emails uh, how long how long we should keep deleted emails 
uh, all those uh, retention policies can be configured in here so a uh, limited end user disruption when moving mailboxes so whenever you're moving mailboxes most of the time with earlier versions it was like uh, we had to uh, <clears throat> let the users know that hey we are moving mailboxes uh, and you're gonna have a downtime of 10 minutes or one hour or two hour so these days when we are moving mailboxes uh, we, we got very limited end user disruption like they even don't know or they even do not notice that some that their mailboxes uh, like on move so this is one of the other exchange server 2010 uh, features that we have so uh, <clears throat> the other thing that we have is uh, <clears throat> Exchange Server 2013. Exchange Server 2013, uh, like uh, with Exchange Server 2010 and Exchange Server 2007, we had Microsoft Management Console, which was like a console uh, uh, where Exchange Server was uh, was. That's how like you were able to access Exchange Server actually. That's the uh, better definition. So, uh, in order to access Exchange Server 2007 and 2010, you had to use Microsoft Exchange Console. But uh, with 2013, uh, it is uh, called Exchange Admin Center. So, you are accessing your Exchange Server through IE, Internet Explorer. So, as you can see in this picture, this is Exchange Admin Center. You just have to type in your username and password uh, uh, and you need to have admin access to your exchange server to access your exchange so this is admin center this is a web-based exchange server 2013 and one of the other thing that we have is data, uh, data loss prevention uh, data loss prevention is uh, it's uh, it's a system that uh, is just designed in exchange server 2013 to detect potential uh, data breach leakage incident in a in a timely manner and prevent it so uh, most of the time most company uh, got really important data they got confidential data they got data that they really don't want to be sent to anyone else uh, uh, so uh, for example for example like credit card information uh, social security numbers uh, company personal details send or any other sensitive data that we we have and should not be uh, disclosed uh, uh, to unauthorized users uh, either uh, with uh, malicious uh, like intent or by mistake so you never want to do that so you never want to send customers credit card information security social security information all those things uh, are uh, really important things and can uh, destroy a company uh, actually if if uh, if they send or do that by mistake so <clears throat> Data uh, like data loss prevention uh, re works through uh, DLP policies, and uh, we're gonna learn more about that. So uh, these are like different; uh, the, these policies are different conditions and rules that are like made up uh, uh, based on like actions and uh, different. Uh, exceptions and exceptions. So uh, these are uh, actually uh, uh, transport rules, transport rules that I was talking about in Exchange Server 2007. So transport rules where it is uh, giving uh, giving you different options that if an email comes in or if an email is trying to go out and there are uh, a, there is a word credit card or there is a word social security do not send it so these this is data loss prevention where you are trying to uh, keep company uh, data safe actually and one of the other thing that we have is SharePoint and Skype for business integration so um, 
we are going to learn more uh, about SharePoint and Skype for business integration. So now Exchange Server can integrate with the Skype for business and SharePoint. So one of the good examples that I can give you is with the Skype for business. So most uh, companies who are running Skype for business, they are integrated with Exchange and Outlook where they are creating meetings, they're scheduling meetings and then they are sending a Skype meetings because it's already uh, integrated with Exchange. And when you click on that Skype meeting, it's opening up a Skype uh, conversation window and everyone is able to join it through that link. And then they are like, they're able to send message, like do instant uh, messaging. And they're able to uh, talk because Skype for Bu Skype for Business is gonna give you that uh, 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 feature actually. So this is this is how Skype for Business and SharePoint is integrated with uh, Exchange Server 2013, which is a big thing. Built-in anti-malware anti where it's just. Uh, making sure that we got no spams all those things and again there are many configurations that you can do with anti-spam anti, anti or anti-malware configurations so uh, one of the other things that we have is uh, that with exchange server 2010 we had like five roles with exchange server 2007 we had five roles they just uh, they just came up with two roles in Exchange Server 2013, which is mailbox role and then client access role. So in uh, Exchange Server 2013, we only got two roles. One is mailbox role and one is exchange. One is client access role. So they shrinked it, uh, which is a good thing. So let's see, like uh, uh, Exchange Server. Uh, 2013 client access uh, this this handles the client connection to mailboxes and uh, this performs various email traffic filtering function as well as like email routing uh, between exchange servers and outside world so this is uh, uh, the exchange server uh, like 2013 client access and the mailbox server role is uh, actually what it's doing is uh, it's running on two uh, transport services. Mail, uh, it's like hub transport service, uh, similar to Exchange Server 2007 and 10. Hub transport was like able to do the email routing, like inside or outside. You are able to do, but most common uh, we use it for inside. So it is for connectivity between front end transport services and the mailbox uh, transport services. And then we got mailbox transport service, and this this uh, service passes email messages between uh, hub transport and mailbox databases so uh, what it's doing is that uh, it's just passing all email messages between hub transport and then uh, um, mailbox databases that's that's what it is doing so uh, again uh, the client access server role is actually the server uh, that that clients are connecting to it, like Outlook, uh, uh, your Outlook 2016-2015, or Outlook web application, ActiveSync. Uh, all these are like used to connect uh, to for mailbox access. So all users or clients are connecting to client access server in order to. Uh, just access their mailboxes. If there's no client access server, uh, your Outlook will always show disconnected or not connected to Exchange server. So uh, there are again two components with ex uh, client access. Uh, that's client access service that handles uh, the client connection to mailboxes, and then uh, and then we got like front end uh, services that perform. Uh, various uh, email traffic filtering uh, functions as well as email routing between the exchange server and outside world so uh, 
one of the other things that we have is uh, is like exchange management shell with more commands we got more and more commands with management shell and it is a cost saving server because of this two mailbox roles if you have more like five mailbox roles like most companies because they have money they're gonna use like five servers so that's why it is cost saving I hope that this video was useful for you and you have learned something. Please leave comments if you have any questions uh, um, and I'll answer to that. Uh, thank you and I'll see you on next lessons.